Right, let's see if we can prove De Morgan's law, shall we? So let's try and do... Oh, I'm writing very wonky, aren't I? Let's try and do the first part, okay? So we've got to show, first of all, that this set is completely contained within that one. So we want to show, first, show that the left-hand side is completely contained within the right-hand side. Remember when we're showing that a set is equal to another set, first we show the left-hand side is contained in the right-hand side, and then the right-hand side is contained in the left-hand side. That's one way of doing it anyway. So let's take some arbitrary element in the left-hand side. Now, there's a slightly subtle point here. I'm going to take one arbitrary element in the left-hand side. Now, you might think that if I prove that that's in the right-hand side, then I've only proved that this particular element is in the right-hand side. But because this element is arbitrary, it means that the proof, whatever we write down, will be true for every element in the left-hand side. So we will, in fact, have proved it for every element in the left-hand side. So let's see how that goes. Right, let's see if I can do this. What does it mean for x to be in the complement of A intersection B? Well, it means that x is not in A intersection B. Now, how can you fail to be in an intersection? It means that you've got to either fail to be in this set or you've got to fail to be in that set. So this implies that x is not in A or x is not in B. Right? But what does x is not in A means? mean? That means that x is in the complement of A or this side, which means that x is in the complement of B. Right? But if you're either in something or in something else, that means that you're in the union of those two things. So that means that x is in A complement union B complement O. That's what we were trying to show. So we've deduced that if x is in the left-hand side, then x, let me stand on this side, we've shown that if x is in the left-hand side, then certainly x is in the right-hand side. Okay. So that shows that the left-hand side is completely contained in the right-hand side. Good. Now, let me see if I can fit the other half in this side. Let me just take that bit off because it's intruding into the right-hand side. Let's now draw a line down the middle and show that so this part was the left hand side is completely contained in the right hand side and now we'll show that the right hand side is completely contained in the left hand side so hopefully we can do it line by line in exactly the same way so let first of all let x be in the right hand side which is a complement union b complement okay so what does that mean that means either x is in this or x is in that. So that means x is in A complement or x is in B complement. Right? Now, what that means is that, well, it's just like here really, that x isn't in A or x isn't in B. Well, what does that mean? That implies that, uh, well, uh, x isn't in A or x isn't in B. Well, that means it can't possibly be in the intersection, right? Because you can only be in the intersection if you're in both of those things. So that means that x is not in the intersection of A and B. But if you're not in the intersection, that means that you are in the complement. So, oh look, that's the left-hand side. So now we've shown, try standing over here, now we've shown that if x is in the right-hand side, then it's definitely in the left-hand side. And this is true for any element in the right-hand side. 
So it looks like we've only shown it for x, but x was just a random arbitrary element on the right-hand side. So every element in the right-hand side is in the left-hand side, right? So combining this part of the proof with this part of the proof, we get the conclusion, which is that the left-hand side really equals the right-hand side. So I should have written that out again, really, but I couldn't be bothered. That's the end of the proof, so I can put a little box, a little very naughty box, apparently, there. Good. So what about the second part of De Morgan's law? This part. There are two ways we could do this. One is we could prove it from scratch just like this. Or the other is we could use our previous lemma. Now, it's always good to use a previous lemma because it might help us repeat some work. And that's exactly what happens in this case. So let me try um, rubbing that out. Maybe I can leave everything up on the board. So for part two, I'm going to use the fact that in general, x complement complement equals x for every set. So how are we going to use that here? Well, we're going to apply, we're trying to find out what, we're trying to find out something about this, okay? And what we know is something about that. So let's see if we can do this. Well, why don't you have a little think about how to do this as well? Have you had a little think about it? Okay, let's see if we can do this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to stick, we're going to take this bit and we're going to stick it in there. And it's a bit confusing because there are too many A's and B's around. So I think I'm just going to rewrite this using some different letters. So I can just rewrite this as C intersection D complement equals C complement union D complement for any C and D. So in particular, we can put in, we can use C equals A complement and D equals B complement. Because then, you see, we're interested, what we're interested in is C intersection D. Now I think I need the rest of this board. So let me get rid of let me get rid of this part of the board. Uh, while I'm doing that, you can see if you can now sort out how to do it, in case you haven't already sorted out how to do it. Okay, so what happens if we then stick that into part one? Then what we get is the left hand side, so we've got C as A prime intersection D, which is B prime, equals C prime, well that's A prime prime, union D prime, which is B prime prime. Okay, but now we can use the fact that anything double primed, you can just delete all those primes, so that's the same as A union B. Right, now we're almost there, but we've, we want, what we are actually interested in, it was in this with a complement there. But if this equals that, so I don't know why I put brackets around here. Okay. So A prime, well now I need brackets around here. So this equals this implies that we can now just put primes on both sides. Prime equals A union B prime. Now I feel like something's gone wrong. Oh, the reason I needed bracket, the reason I needed things around here was because I needed a bracket there. So let's just make sure that that error didn't mess everything up. So on the left hand side, I've got C intersection D primed, right, uh, equals that. So that's supposed to have a prime here, and that's supposed to have a prime here. So A prime intersection B prime is that prime equals C prime union D prime, which is that. So what I've got from this part is that equals that. So now I can prime both sides and I get this, okay? Hope my little typo didn't confuse you too much. Right, so now that I've got this, I can say to myself, oh, but that's just the same as deleting that double prime. So what we get is that A prime intersection B prime equals 
A union B prime. There. Phew! That's the thing that we were looking for. So we're done.